but as far as I Max wakes up outside in the middle of a storm, and unless you is shit-faced drunk, that counts as a sin when you start a story off like that. Bonus sin for being basically a dark and stormy night opening as well. Where am I? What's happening? You tell me. The game just started. However, I am suddenly getting Alan Wake flashbacks, because that game starts in a dream sequence where you need to get to a lighthouse and there's a giant tornado chasing you. Whoa. That's the second sudden wake-up call in the first five minutes. We should rename this the Inception Cliché. Whoa. That was so surreal. Famously called film Little Pieces of Time. But he could be talking about photography, as he likely was. The teacher doesn't care about or wake up the student who was sleeping in the middle of his class while he stood right in front of her giving a lecture. I didn't and fall asleep. And that Anybody? sure didn't feel like a dream. Bueller? Weird. Yes, you were. Your head was even down. That is the definition of sleeping in glass. You could do that to me. Shh, shh. I believe Max has taken what you kids call a selfie. Photography class or not, taking a selfie in the middle of a lecture would get your ass landed in detention. A dumb word for a wonderful photographic tradition. And Max has a gift. How do you have a gift for taking selfies? Is there anybody here who knows their stuff? Louis Daguerre was a French painter who created daguerreotypes. A process that gave portraits a sharp reflective style like a mirror. Now you're totally stuck in the retro zone. Sad face. Using emoji in real conversation. If kids are actually doing that these days, then consider this a sin for real life. An eight student class, huh? Well, I guess that's about what you should expect from an art school. Found all about him in your textbook. You mean the textbooks none of them have with them in class? That was amazing when Mr. Jefferson took a class picture the first week. Even though I didn't want to be in the picture at all, it was fairly fucking cool to watch him at work framing us. Looks like a Monday Instagram pic to me. Wanna go grab a cup of tea and bitch about life? Thanks, but not today. I have to go over homework. You should have asked her to go talk about your periods. That would have gotten you hours of discussion. Or so I'm told by my divorced construction worker friends. Excuse me, Mr. Jefferson, can I talk to you for a moment? When and why did it become popular for female leads to speak like they studied at the Christine Stewart Mouth Breathing School of Acting? Have you ever tried talking like this? It's actually physically painful after a while. I call this the hallway of every high school character cliche. You have the hot girl and her jock boyfriend, the nerd, the bullied kid and his bullies, and the cool kids. An optional name for this would be the Saved by the Bell cliche. Game clearly says don't nod only for Max to nod. I can't help but think that was intentional on the developer's part. Imagine a world without you. American girls I'd like to. This is a great song, don't get me wrong, and fits the scene well. But they missed the perfect opportunity to play Smells Like Teen Spirit. Maybe the developers didn't want to pay Courtney Love a licensing fee, and that's a legitimate reason. But when you have the opportunity to play Smells Like Teen Spirit, you play Smells Like Teen Spirit. God, Samuel is such a weirdo. But I kind of like that about him. You have disturbing taste in men. God bless you and people like you. This is the second game I played this year that features the butterfly effect as a central plot element. I just can't get over the fact that they were both beaten to the punch by an Ashton Kutcher movie. Which this game basically rips off anyway. So what do you want? I hope you check the perimeter, as my step-ass would say. Now, let's talk business. I got nothing for you. You didn't check the perimeter. You conveniently missed the last stall in the empty janitor space at the end. Wrong. You got hella cash. That's my family, not me. Oh, boo-hoo, poor little rich kid. I know you've been pumping drugs and shit to kids around here. I bet your respectable family would help me out if I went to them. Why are you holding your blackmail meeting in the girls' restroom? Nathan is a guy, and Chloe doesn't even go to school here. Was behind the school building not an option? The parking lot, maybe? Anywhere but here? I can tell everybody Nathan Prescott is a punk ass who begs like a little girl and talks to himself. You don't know that he talks to himself, though. You came in after he finished doing his I'm crazy monologue. Get that gun away from me, psycho! No! No. Whoa. This game breaks its own time travel rules right from the beginning. Every other time Max rewinds, she doesn't rewind herself. She stays in place. Here when she rewinds, she goes back to Mr. Jefferson's glass. Don't Nod's last game, Remember Me, was about rewinding people's memories to change how they acted in the present. Essentially time travel. They apparently recycled the idea and dropped the pretense that it wasn't time travel in order to make this game. I think John Lennon once said that life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. Max rewinds time just so she can quote John Lennon at her teacher. Me? I would use it to quote the Fresh Prince. It's all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. Okay, Max. Retrace every step. I washed my face. I shredded my photo. Then the butterfly flew in. And I took a photo. You don't have to actually wash your face, rip up your selfie, and take a photo of the butterfly to get Nathan and Chloe to enter the restroom again. That was going to happen regardless. The only reason you redo two of those things is because they're important to the plot later. 
Why was Max pacing back and forth when the conversation between Nathan and Chloe had already started? By this point, Nathan had already entered the restroom and started ranting to himself, and Chloe had already started blackmailing him. Shouldn't Max have already been paying attention? Knowing that Nathan is going to shoot Chloe, Max's plan is to hide in the restroom and then stop it. There are so many smarter things she could have done. Like, I don't know, call the school security guard? Or a teacher? Or even just stand outside the restroom and grab Chloe when she shows up and tell her that there's a guy with a gun in there. She didn't even come up with a plan to sound the fire alarm until she was in the restroom and shit was going down. I just saw Nathan Prescott waving a gun around. Mr. Prescott happens to be from the town's most distinguished family. And one of Blackwell's most honored students. So it's hard for me to see him brandishing a weapon in the girls' bathroom. We live in a time when kids get arrested for bringing homemade clocks to school. I'm pretty sure Nathan would be on his way to jail, rich dad or not. That many missing person posters in one place kind of runs into the law of diminishing returns. Also, it doesn't help if you scatter them on the ground in front of the same billboard they were already plastered all over. Max, I don't feel like talking. Why are you depressed? You have a muffin. Would you mind letting me sketch you? I do put... My sketch is on Facebook, though. Daniel's face is the real-world equivalent of the Lenny face emoji. My dissing of you requires me to walk around you in a circle. Unless you're dropping bars in a rap battle, a conversation should never look like this. Since you know all the answers, I guess you have to find another way into the dorm. We ain't moving. You don't need to get up. There's plenty of room to your right for her to walk around you. Max potentially gets Samuel fired just so she could drop a bucket of paint in your Victoria and splash your shirt, letting Max walk up the stairs to her dorm. Hey, Victoria. What do you want, Max? No. The make fun of option doesn't make the obvious bukkake joke. Instant film is so damn hard to find and expensive now. But I can't help it. I'm analog, not digital. You can be analog and still use a good camera. You use an Instamatic, meaning your photos are going to be garbage. Have you ever seen a Polaroid? Red eye, horrible color representation, more eye effect, and no depth of field. You can't get out now, Dana. So tell me the truth or rotten there. Yeah, I totally locked you in your own dorm room from the outside. That's how doors work after all. That is a tasty plasma. Maybe I could sneak in and watch Final Fantasy Spirits Within. I don't care what anybody says, that's one of the best sci-fi films ever made. Max actually likes Final Fantasy Spirits Within. I wonder why she mentioned that movie, oh yeah. I think Warren forgot to hide the Party Buster folder. I'm guessing the Party Buster file is where Warren keeps all of his shock videos like Two Girls, One Cup, and Lemon Party. Don't Google those, by the way. Alyssa, move your head. If you insist, Max. Now that's what I'm talking about. I actually helped somebody. You actually helped somebody? You saved someone's life! This is actually a step down from that. Hey, nobody is bullying anybody. I'm doing my job. No, you're not. You're part of the problem, Missy. I will remember this conversation. Yeah, I know. I've played Telltale-style games before. That's what the text in the upper left always tells me. You will remember that, but it won't matter. What up, Max? How are you? Here's your flash. Thanks. That aborted hug is pretty much Warren's character arc for this game. It would be so karmic to see your ass clown face all over the interwebs. Interwebs? That's 2004 internet memes, dude. You can draw? I thought you were blinded by science, not art. Art is science. Music is math, etc, etc. I'd put Stephen Hawking against Picasso any day. Stephen Hawking would lose badly in an art contest with Picasso. The man can literally only move his cheek. So unless they're going to discuss quantum physics or wheelchair ramps, you need to shut the hell up about Stephen Hawking. Make sure you watch Cannibal Holocaust. If you mention Cannibal Holocaust to a girl, panties come off. I know you like to take pictures, especially when you're hiding out in the bathrooms. Nathan just assumes Max was in the restroom at the same time he was simply because he found her shredded photo on the floor. And what's more, he went back to get the photo after leaving the restroom, since he left it on the floor when he ran out. He's not even really holding you. His thumb is standing straight up. You could pull away, no problem. Max? Chloe? How come Max didn't recognize Chloe back in the restroom? The only new piece of information she learned since then is that this girl knows her name. But only now does she recognize her as her childhood friend. I would think you'd fit right in with the art school hipsters. Right. You look like the cover of hipstergirl.com. Hipstergirl.com would be a porn site. Or should be a porn site. I need to buy that URL. There is no one driving this other truck. Come in and close the door. Put on some music while I medicate. Despite how much pot Chloe smokes, she has never once seen high. Wait, I've seen this before. Uh, no way. When did you take this? You took this photo, you brat? In the bathroom today. This janitor panel and tile floor left such an impression on Chloe that she remembered it months after she was expelled from Blackwell. And because Max took a photo of it, Chloe automatically assumes Max was in the restroom at the same time Nathan pulled the gun on her. Video game dancing has a long tradition of being incredibly awkward looking. One of my guns is missing. Did you take it? If Chloe stole one of David's guns, why didn't she bring it with her when she went to blackmail Nathan for drugging her? 
She obviously stole the gun before today since she only just got home. And Nathan is clearly dangerous since he tried to rape Chloe a few nights ago. Is that grass? You been token up again in here? Oh, really? Who rolls a filter into their joint? I would be more upset about that than my stepdaughter smoking pot. I'm sick of your disrespect. Tell me the truth. That's an order. Whose is it? You have no reason to believe it's anyone but Chloe's. It's still burning and the room would smell. This shit pit has taken away everyone I've ever loved. I'd like to drop a bomb on Arcadia Bay and turn it to fucking glass. Visions of an apocalyptic future are triggered by irony. Oh my lord! The tornado is back! Actually, it's a water spot if it forms over water. October 11th? Is this Friday? That's only four days away! A convenient newspaper just so happens to be here so Max can learn what day this tornado appears. Even though a newspaper lying around can be from any previous day and not just on this one. And this is all just a vision she's having. Why would there be a newspaper flying around at all? Chloe doesn't restrain Max when she's tripping out right next to a cliff ledge. She was zoned out standing right on the edge, and touching her shoulder made her fall over. How do you think I saved you in the bathroom? By reversing time? Yeah, sure. I saw you get shot, Chloe. Saw you actually die. I was able to go back and hit the fire alarm. Okay, I see you're a geek now with a great imagination, but this isn't anime or a video game. This isn't what it is when it actually is cliché. What the hell is this? Snowflakes? It's like 80 degrees. Time travel, visions of an impending disaster, weird phenomena, teenage janks. If a giant rabbit in a mask shows up, I'm out. Previously on The Stuff You Just Finished Playing. Episode 2 also begins with Max waking up. I think I'm actually going to start calling this opening the I wrote this back in high school cliché. Also, don't think I didn't notice your Groundhog Day reference with the alarm clock. Just because you're a game about rewinding time doesn't mean you get to compare yourself with Groundhog Day. It's been only a few hours since Max and Chloe were talking at the lighthouse. Since then, Max has had time to read multiple books on time travel while taking notes. Warren sent Max an email full of time travel movie recommendations. However, he didn't recommend Groundhog Day or Back to the Future on his list. In fact, he only mentions Back to the Future as a pun at the end. This automatically calls into question Warren's judgment on pretty much everything. Apparently, in girls' dorms, it's routine to crack open the shower door and throw a roll of toilet paper down the hall for no reason. Also, this toilet paper breaks the laws of physics as far as I can tell. It gets thrown from the back of this hallway, yet hits the wall which is facing away from the hallway. Also, there are no toilets in this shower room, so why was there a roll of toilet paper in there to begin with? The last time I got a flu shot, I got the flu. Fuck you. I never expected to hear an anti-vax message in a video game. Max gets into a shower stall with her bedclothes on, and I can only assume they get soaked because there's nowhere inside to hang them. That video of you clubbing didn't look like homework. Victoria, that wasn't me. Overheard restroom conversation cliche. Victoria and her friend walk into the shower room to glance at themselves in the mirror and give exposition on Kate. I think it's awesome you set a tongue record on video. <laughs> You're going to be sorry someday. Oh, boo-hoo. I'm sorry you're a viral slut. Kate is upset because a video of her making out with guys at a party has gone viral. So viral, it already has its own web address. Yeah, Kate is religious, but unless she was Westboro Baptist religious, no one would care. How do I get a viral video taken down? <laughs> I need to find out if Nathan Prescott helped me or hurt me after that party. Should I go to the police? You're asking if you should go to the police after a rich kid Bill Cosby'd you at a party? Girl, you should go to Time Magazine and get a goddamn cover story. The squirrels always come in the morning for food. I can hear them whisper. My spirit animal is a squirrel. Samuel was like a Lenny Smalls of mice and men for a new generation. Tell me about the dank memes, Max. That is clearly a bottle of mustard, yet the label says mayo. Hello there to you. Such a beautiful day, eh? Oh yeah, it's gonna be a super day. Enjoy your breakfast, eh? In this game, being Canadian is enough to get you labeled weird lady. Nothing at all has happened in this diner until Max needed to prove to Chloe that she can rewind time. Then everything happens at once just so Max can remember it all and rewind time so she can predict it happening to Chloe. Even though Max just finished telling Chloe everything that was in her pockets, which should have been more than enough to prove her rewind power is real. Don't even answer. We have places to go and people to do. Come on, before Mom starts some more shit, let's bail. It's Kate Marsh from Blackwell. Big whoop. You don't call me once in five years and now you're all over some biatch you see every day at school? I don't really see the conflict here. It's a call on a cell phone. Max can take Kate's call and get in your truck to drive to the dump with you at the same time. Is everybody armed in Arcadia Bay now? Only the ones who shouldn't be. Like Step Dildo. And Nathan. You know, the guy who tried to rape and later kill you? I feel that he's a far bigger threat to you than your stepfather. But apparently he didn't warrant a mention here. Okay, let's do this. 
Can you find five bottles while I prep the shooting range? I speak for everyone who's ever played this game when I say, fuck these bottles. Fuck these bottles in particular. I know that this ghost here is supposed to be Max's spirit animal, but seriously, why does she have a spirit animal? And why does every t-shirt Max wears have a deer on it? Is she aware of this fact? I have to assume she is because she doesn't freak the hell out when she comes across a transparent deer. Jesus, I shot myself! Ugh, I shot myself! Can I play the Imogen Heap song when someone shoots themselves? I heard the gunshots and the breaking glass. It's cute that you're playing with guns. If you heard all of that, then that means you were close by the entire time. However, you chose to stay hidden for quite a while, since this is after Max passed out from overusing her powers. You better step back before you regret it, girl. I mean it. You want me to cut you, bitch? Please. Please step back. You're kidding. You just finished saying you heard them shooting a gun. Why would you bring a knife to the gunfight and then be surprised when the other guys brought a gun? Six-shot revolver is empty after shooting just four bullets. At least Frank is gone. He won't fuck with us again. He just finished saying that he would come looking for you again for his money in a few days, and this time with a gun he just stole from you. Ah, uh, I remember the days when I too would reenact Stand By Me by walking down train tracks before lying down on them without a care in the world. No. No, I didn't because I had Nintendo. Now stop napping on the train tracks, you stupid idiots! Your foot clearly isn't stuck between the train tracks. Rather than look for a way to free Chloe's leg from the tracks, how about you just rewind time to the moment before the tracks switched and then warn her to move her foot? I have to get back to school before my next class. What kind of schedule does Blackwell Academy keep with its curriculum? Max woke up in her dorm, had a shower, took a school bus to a diner in town, then went with Chloe to shoot some bottles in a junkyard before walking a mile down the train tracks. By now, it has to be noon at the least. We have a tornado, rewind power, and freak snow. Hello, Armageddon. So let's party with your power, Rockstar! Both Chloe and Max show a shocking lack of disinterest in Max's vision of an impending disaster. If it were me and I had a friend who had control over time, I would weight any visions of apocalyptic doom that person had fairly highly. Pluto is in a planet. This science class is nothing but a wall of lies. Maxwell Silver Hammer. Perfect timing. If you're going to use an endearing nickname for a girl you like, best not to choose one that's a reference to a Beatles song about a serial killing student. I want that photo whore or I get nasty. Victoria, who created a viral video of Kate kissing guys at a party, wants the photo of her covered in paint that Max took. Considering what goes viral in this world, she might have a reason to be worried. I saw Kate earlier and her eyes were puffy from crying. How? You were in the science class when Kate left the building crying. And we just saw her outside the window. Yo! Some crazy shit is going down at the girl's door! Yeah, Kate Marsh is about to jump to her death, so I ran all the way over here from the other side of campus to randomly announce it to this one class. Why did I do that for again? Everyone always checks the weather channel for rain before committing suicide. This game's dialogue trees would be good at game sense. Since it lets me choose the option, I would also use in this video if it hadn't. How does that proverb go? When justice is done, it brings joy to the righteous, but terror to the evildoers. Personally, I'm more of a fan of Ezekiel 25:17. It even kind of works in this situation if you kind of stretch the context. Just a moment ago, it was cloudy and rainy, but the light coming through those windows would suggest otherwise. Officer Barry will be taking notes for the official police inquiry. He'll be taking notes with his non-existent pen and paper. As principal of Blackwell Academy, I take my duties seriously. I take the well-being of every student more seriously. You did absolutely nothing when Max told you Nathan was carrying a gun in school. Warren makes his move after Max is emotionally upset because she just witnessed her friend commit suicide. Guy has game. Fucking horrible game, but game. This makes the third episode in a row that begins with Max waking up. This is bad writing 101 and you keep repeating the same mistake. Booyah! Star wipe. Also, this is a case of off-screen stealth. Since this student quad was empty when Max got here and there was nothing for Chloe to hide behind and surprise Max from. Get it? Booyah. Like I'm a... Scary punk ghost. That's not how puns work. That's not how anything works. You already love my work, so it's not like you're playing favorites. Just imagine if you picked my photo, though. We would have to spend a lot of time together. That could be fun, don't you think? I'm going to think that you didn't say any of that. You might as well choose me. Otherwise, I might have to tell people you offered to choose my photo for favors or something. As a favor to your future, I'll also ignore that undisguised threat. If the promise of sex with a barely legal girl doesn't reel him in, chances are threatening him with rape accusations isn't going to make him want to break off a piece either. I don't know about this. We're both already in so much trouble. You can always let me get busted like you did with the weed. It was your weed in your room and you told her to hide in the closet. Holding her responsible for that makes you look like an asshole. Because Max basically teleports through time rather than actually rewinding it, she can enter a room by blowing it open, then rewind back to before the explosion while still in the room. However, no one ever seems to notice Max reappearing right in front of their eyes when she messes with time. Max, you better come check out these files. You better take a look at this cliche. It's just some crazy drawing. It's not a drawing. Look. 
Rachel in the dark room. Rachel in the dark room. Rachel was a student at this school and has been missing for months, and the faculty never reported Nathan's drawing to the cops. Hell, the principal even refused to believe Nathan carried a gun despite this being a report on his computer. Welcome to 1950. Or 2015 internet arguments. When the security guards show up to catch Max and Chloe, they both hide in the girls' locker room. However, Chloe is nowhere to be seen in it while you are avoiding the security guards, then shows up like she was there the whole time once the threat has passed. This guard didn't see them even though they were walking along a brightly lit path. Drawing attention to your truck as you pull out of the school parking lot was probably not the best idea, since your stepdad works here as a security guard and he was here tonight. When I see piles of discarded clothes and two pairs of feet on a bed with some post-coital morning light, I don't expect the next shot to have fully clothed people. Maybe that's just me. I wish we could just hang out all morning like we used to. Maybe we should get up. I have to get back to Blackwell soon. Why? It's quite clear that classes don't start there until 1 p.m. Today the gym, tomorrow the world. Skip! but in a really indie movie kind of way, which I guess would require an in-depth conversation about growing up and learning to live with your choice. Holy shit, just skip. For example, I dare you to kiss me. What? I double dare you, kiss me now. Damn, you're hardcore, Max. Now I can text Warren and tell him he doesn't stand a chance, unless he's into girl and girl action. That should never be in doubt. For proof, just look at the amount of people who chose to kiss Chloe in the statistics page at the end of this episode. Oh hell, Nathan Drake's half tuck look is spreading. No shit it needs a password. How about step douche? Try again. Step douche would be a 10 letter password. Max only typed 7 letters though. Such wrong. Much memes. Very cliche. The actual password, 112708, is a 6 digit password, but Max still types 7 characters. I have to take a nap after writing up vandalism reports last night. What happened? Some little shit ass punks broke into the swimming pool. There was a message on your answering machine this morning from the police who said Chloe's truck had been identified leaving the parking lot, and the only person who saw Lee was one of the school's security guards. If they contacted the police about the break in, then you would have to know about it by now. Between your investigations into Rachel and Kate, what have you done besides get in trouble? The game gives me no reason to choose to side with David in this argument. So this is really a press here if this is your second playthrough and you want to see how things change, which is what most of the choices in this game boil down to. Shipples. Okay, here's the plan. I'll go to the diner and distract Frank by telling him I have his money, but he needs to come with me. Then you come in and rewind so Frank doesn't see me. Then you can tell Frank he needs to check out his RV, and then you rewind after you get the key. Not that you succeeded the last time you tried to pick a lock, but you could at least give this one the old college try. What the fuck do you want? Take a picture of me and I'll break your fucking camera. At this point, you know next to nothing about Max, so how you know that Max is into photography is anybody's guess. I was eating those beans. Are you fucking insane? I was eating those beans! <laughs> As a well-known drug dealer, assaulting a young girl in a diner with a cop only a few feet away at the counter is probably not the smartest idea you could have. Also, this cop doesn't turn to look at the commotion going on right behind him. Besides, you don't want a leash. You want these keys right here. And I'm just gonna pull these out for dramatic impact and put them on the table rather than back in my pocket so you can steal them. Get the treat, treat boy! I think we just made that dog our bitch. Get it? Your puns are not that complicated. Please stop asking if we get it. Presto, Chloe's gun. From that angle, it's impossible for you to see that gun. I have a terrible present for you. Ugh, an ounce of dank bud? That would be a terrible present? Why does everybody in my life let me down? My dad gets killed, you bail on me for years, my mother gloms on a stepfucker, now Rachel betrays me. Chloe, Rachel is missing. Nobody betrayed you. Bullshit! Who hasn't? Fuck everybody! That's the first time in this game that these characters have actually sounded like real teenagers. Kate Marsh killed herself. She's dead. Such sad. Writing teenage characters requires a bit more effort than having them repeat Reddit memes. Do you know what it's like to wait for your father to come home when you're a kid? And he never does. No, but I know quite a few Ubisoft characters that do. Also, that's a dead parent for character motivation cliche. Right after Chloe went on a rant about how much her life sucks because her dad died, Max discovers a new superpower that lets her travel back in time to when a photo was taken so she can change things. I'm not sure how she developed such a specific superpower or why it only started working right now, but whatever. Though it does bring up the question, what happens if she tries to go back in time using a Photoshop? Also, it was really lucky that Joyce gave Max the photo this morning that William took on the day he died so she could travel back and stop it from happening. 
Someday Dad will get one of them newfangled computers. Newfangled computers? This is like 2009, not 1999. I'm 18 years old inside my 13-year-old self. And yet, you are the exact same height at 13 as you are at 18. I'm 18 years old inside my 13-year-old self. Also, that sentence. Stopping Chloe's dad from getting in the car and dying somehow changed the presence of the Max as part of the Vortex Club at school and friends with Victoria. Even though there's no reason why William not dying would have affected her life in such a way, since the course of Max's life in this new timeline played out the same, with her family moving to Seattle and Max coming back years later for school. It only took four episodes for one of them to finally begin with Max already awake. This is such a different world than when we were kids, isn't it? After that snow and eclipse, it's more like the end of the world. Wait, so the snow and eclipse happened in this timeline as well? How does that make any sense? That stuff happened because Max created a new timeline by saving Chloe from being killed by Nathan. In this timeline, that never happened. Yet the tornado is still on its way to destroy the town. Whoa, Chloe can totally control her computer. It's so great people get this high-tech help. Nearly every line of dialogue Max has feels like it's something someone would write on a Facebook wall. I think I'm in like a, a mellow Blade Runner mood. I don't know what version of Blade Runner they're watching, but it can't be the correct one if that's what the opening sounds like. If Max fell asleep during the movie, who turned the TV off? Chloe is paralyzed and has no remote. Uh, do, you, do you think Deckard is a replicant? It's pretty well established fact that he is. Sorry. Next up on the sci-fi movie trivia list was Douglas Quaid lobotomized at the end of Total Recall when it cut to white at the end and was Dom Cobb still dreaming at the end of Inception. It's cool that Chloe uses natural medicine too. With that anti-vax line, lines about climate change, and now this, sometimes this game feels like it was sponsored by the Huffington Post. I want this time with you to be my last memory. Do you understand? Yes, I do. All you have to do is crank up the IV to 11. I'm not sure if Chloe is making a reference to this is Spinal Tap with that up to 11 line, but regardless, I'm pretty sure you can't crank an IV up to it. Please. Help me, Max. I think you were overlooking the fact that you were asking your best friend to kill you, meaning she will be spending several years in jail because she did you a solid. Game makes a big deal about choosing to help Chloe commit suicide, but then has Max go back in time using the photo again to undo her saving a William, resetting the timeline back to what it was and making this choice irrelevant, which is pretty much what all of your decisions are. There's really no reason to burn this photo. It's not like you're going to accidentally go back in time and stop Chloe's dad from leaving again. 1. Decipher Frank's logbook. 2. Get Nathan's phone to find out where he's been during the Vortex Club parties with Kate and Rachel. And see whatever hidden shit he's got in his messages. 3. Beat Step Douche Dan until he tells us about Frank, Nathan, and the Darkroom. You just returned from a completely different timeline. You should be out of the loop about what you and Chloe have been up to in this one for the past few hours. How would you even know what the plan is to figure out where Rachel Amber is? Rather than hide his phone behind the sofa in his dorm room, why isn't Nathan carrying it around with him? And what's more, why hasn't he deleted the incriminating text he sent about buying drugs the night Rachel disappeared? That's the reason he hit his phone in the first place. Get off me, brah! Get off me, brah. Or should I call the cops on Nathan? No police. Not yet. He pulled a gun on you in school a second time, and this time there are three people who saw it. I think you have a possible arrest on your hands. How did Frank get his RV to the beach? Last episode, Chloe threw his car keys under the roof of the diner without him knowing after they stole his logbook. Or are there two sets of the same keys now since Max stole his keys, rewound time to before she stole them, but still had the... You know what? I'm gonna need a flowchart to keep track of this stuff. Nothing, Max. There's nothing here. Just a shitty old barn. Let's keep searching and find out who owns this haunted barn. I'm on this. Hold on. Somebody named Harry Aaron Prescott. That took you like five seconds ago from Google Maps to finding the property deeds for the barn. Should we call the police? Fuck that. You know the police here are like Nathan's private security, right? You know, if you're not going to have your characters do the rational thing and call the police because you have a barely believable excuse, you don't need to have the characters keep asking the question if the answer is always going to be the same. Chloe just looked up the name of the person who owns the barn, yet her browser is still on the map rather than anything that would tell her who owns it. The barn door is locked with a padlock, but conveniently there's a piece of tin just leaning against the wall that can be moved so you can get in. Considering what's in this barn, that's a big security oversight. If you're going to go to the trouble of putting a keypad lock in your secret underground bunker, you might want to use more than three numbers in the combination. Despite finding a room full of evidence on Kate, Rachel, and other missing girls and discovering Rachel's body buried in the junkyard, they're still not going to call the police. Just what were you planning to do in the first place if your private investigation led you anywhere? Jesus, Chloe, look up at the sky! Possible. Beautiful. I don't give a shit. The world is ending. Cool. Murder boner or not, double moons are going to make you do a double take. Welcome to the end of the world, ladies. 
I'm glad you decided to escort me. The only alcohol being served at this party is in the VIP area, which Warren would not be allowed into. The regular area is only serving energy drinks and soda, meaning Warren got wasted on Red Bull. Also, how would any school get away with allowing students to drink at a party in the school? Yo, maximum overdrive, about... No, you were not allowed to talk ever again due to mentioning maximum overdrive. Also, does everyone in this game have a nickname for Max? She's been called Maxine, Mad Max, Max Factor, Maximilian, Maxwell, and now this. I don't think most high schoolers would be cool with co-ed restrooms at a party. Kate Marsh killed herself in front of you and me, everybody here. That's not my fault, Max. Yeah, it kind of is your fault. You not only posted the video, but you even created a website for it and wrote the website URL on the shower room mirrors. I kept thinking, did I cause this? Did I? I felt like shit ever since. And here I am partying. I got over it. There are even teachers at this school party that's giving out booze. What the fuck? What you say? Oh, that you only meant well, well, cause you did. What you say? Max starts episode 5 by waking up yet again. Yeah, she was drugged by Mr. Jefferson at the end of the last episode, so there's at least a reason for it this time. But when 4 out of 5 episodes start out the same way, I can't summon the energy to care. See? That's why you always use multiple layers of duct tape and make it tight so it cuts off the circulation and numbs their limbs, so even if they wanted to break free, they can't- Hey, why do I hear police sirens? I knew you were special the second I saw your first selfie. Yes, I still hate that word. Now that I've revealed myself to be the villain, I'm going to start speaking in a low, menacing whisper. Since video games don't want to touch the subject of rape with a 10-foot pole, they have to come up with something similar, but not as bad. Like Mr. Jefferson drugging girls and then photographing them. This room is under 24-7 surveillance, so all I had to do was text you from Nathan's phone. And you fell right into my hand. How did you beat Chloe and Max to the junkyard in order to ambush them? You were still at the party giving Victoria her reward, and Max and Chloe left the school before you after you sent a fake text from Nathan's phone. 10 minutes of villain monologuing. Mr. Jefferson was taking one hell of a risk by bringing drug girls here and photographing them. He was basically betting that they wouldn't remember anything, just like Kate didn't. And he's done this a lot judging by the amount of binders in his storage cabinet. You're evil. Oh, I see. You and your friends almost beat Nathan to death. See, we're not so different. We're not so different, you and I, Cliché. Just, how do you even figure? Look at that shot, Max. You can do so much better. And of course, Max's diary opens to the middle page where the selfie she took of herself back in Mr. Jefferson's class is so she can go back in time and stop Jefferson then. Had it opened to any other photo, she would have been screwed right now. In this new timeline where Mr. Jefferson and Nathan are arrested and Rachel Amber's body discovered at the junkyard, Chloe doesn't seem that torn up about discovering her girlfriend was murdered. I've been through so many realities in one week. Life is... Weird. Close enough. Roll credits. Oh, you left the ringer off, idiot. Well, you weren't really conscious of yourself turning off your phone. You just woke up from time travel a minute ago. So missing Chloe's phone call about the tornado isn't really your fault. Chloe, where are you? I'm so fucking scared. I'm, I'm by the beach. I'm Chloe, can you hear me? Hello? Phone call cuts off mid-sentence cliche. Max going back in time again to rip up her winning photo so that she doesn't end up in San Francisco causes her to end up back in Mr. Jefferson's darkroom again because he found a ripped up photo in her diary and got so angry he burned her photos. Which is supposed to mean she never traveled back to the selfie she took in his class. However, the change she made when she went back and got Jefferson arrested should have still happened since the photo tearing change happened before that. Jesus, I told you I was going to need a flowchart. But considering you're about to die, a nosebleed is a first world problem. Mr. Jefferson uses dank internet memes. I think he's the first villain since the Juggernaut in X-Men 3 to do that. I hope these images will be appreciated for what they truly capture. No one is ever going to see them but you. There are no serial killer photo galleries for you to display these in. No, I'm a Crazy people always have musical tastes that describe them. You would think that in a game where the main character can control time, you wouldn't need to have a deus ex machina come to the rescue. But you'd be wrong. How did David even know to come here tonight during a tornado, no less? By his own admission, he was staying in a motel feeling sorry for himself for getting kicked out by Joyce. He never figured out the truth for himself, so finding this dark room should have been impossible. In this reality, the tornado has knocked out cell phone coverage. Yet, in the timeline Max just came from, she managed to call Chloe during the tornado. David, wait! Just a moment ago, you said this. I don't care what you do to me. You're gonna die, motherfucker. You can't Sam Jackson a scene, then follow it up with pacifism. Warren, can you hear me? Wait, you just said there was no signal a moment ago. Message received yesterday at 9 p.m. Max, it's, it's Nathan. I, I just wanted to say 
I'm sorry. Why is Max only just now receiving a voicemail from Nathan warning her about Mr. Jefferson? He sent this yesterday while he was still alive and before Max was drugged. Max and Chloe were even lured to the junkyard by a text Jefferson sent from Nathan's phone which he sent after killing him. I can't believe you actually drove down here in the middle of a fucking E6 tornado. Just for one photograph? I mean, I know you didn't come for me. Warren, I came for all of you. Just tell me you do have the photograph. I came for all of you. But about that photograph. I could use a hug before I do this. Me too. You have violated platonic hug law. Violation number one. You stepped into the hug and squeezed. Violation number two. You closed your eyes and enjoyed the moment. Violation number three. Arms around waist rather than shoulders. That's three strikes. You have been downgraded from like an older brother to me status to little brother status. Chloe. Jesus, dude, what is up with you? I'm just glad we're here together. I guess you need to talk. No worries. It's all good. At this point, Warren has been friend zoned in multiple timelines. You might just want to warn Warren now by not taking shelter in the Two Wells Diner during the tornado, since it exploded before Max got there and rewound time to stop it from happening. So after making sure Chloe doesn't die by going to the junkyard tonight and telling David about Mr. Jefferson, your plan was to go to the beach and stand in the path of the tornado? You're kind and caring. Nobody could have a better best friend. Is this really the fucking time for this? Then the storm got hella crazy and, and you said we would be safe at the lighthouse. Why would she tell you that? Max saw the lighthouse fall apart in her vision of the tornado. The entire climax of this game is a nightmare dream sequence. That would be okay if it wasn't used solely to set up a flood of feels for the ending. Suddenly I'm getting PT flashbacks. I better stop before Konami has them taken down. Doing the game's intro sequence in reverse is easily one of my favorite moments I had in a game all year and is easily worth taking off three sins for alone. Max dreams that every male character in the game is trying to kill her. I don't want to accuse the game of implying something, but I think the game is implying something. Discuss. God damn, you are a sexy bitch. See, this is how you bust a move, Max. I fucking love your tats, Chloe. You're so hot. Suddenly, I'm getting casting couch flashbacks. Who are you? Holy shit, are you cereal? I'm you, dumbass. Or I'm one of many Maxes you've left behind. The idea of there being alternate timeline Maxes is an interesting one. Too bad the game only brings it up in a dream sequence and never again. What about the crap that was your fault? Wait, wait, let me guess. You fucked up time and space for your precious punk Chloe? Alternate versions of you will always bring up all the reasons why you suck. Hallway of how we got here cliche. This is the only way. You... You could use that photo to change everything right back to when you took that picture. Chloe doesn't know that Max uses photos to go back in time. All Max ever told her is that she rewound time to when they were kids and tried to save her dad. She never once mentioned that she used photos to do it. Also, I call bullshit that Chloe would still be carrying that photo around with her a week after she took it from Max. Despite that disclaimer at the start of the game that tells you that all your choices will affect the outcome, really only this one choice matters. Since all of your other choices get erased if you pick the ending the devs obviously want you to pick. Ending A, you're not an asshole. Ending B, you're an asshole. Rewinding time back to the restroom to let Chloe die is supposed to restore the original timeline and stop the tornado from ever happening. Except that there's still one difference between what was supposed to happen before Max rewound time to save Chloe and now. Originally when Chloe was shot, Max came out of hiding and yelled no, meaning Nathan would have discovered that she was there and there was a witness to his murder. So there's a compelling reason to believe Max was supposed to die here along with Chloe. This time around, Max remains hidden until David arrives and arrests Nathan, staring off into the sunset cliché. Are you fucking insane? I was eating those beans! 